Hi guys. I'm starting to hopefully get better at this. Nope, I don't want to learn more. I don't want to learn more about the chat. Okay, we're going to wait for everyone to get in. Let me go to Instagram and let everyone know. Everyone a little room. Okay, there we go. Hi guys. I just wanted to give everyone a reminder on uh, Instagram because I uh, have been on Instagram for so long that I've obviously um, been able to build a huge family on Instagram. So I wanted to remind people to come over to YouTube because that's really my main source of talking to you guys is on is on YouTube. Let me turn off that heater. Um, it's getting a little chilly where we are. Um, oh. Okay, I think we're live. I think we're live. Yes, we're live. Okay, great. Hi guys. Thank you so much for joining this YouTube live session right now. It's a small group of us. I just wanted to get together um, and remind everyone that I would love to get to know you guys more. I'm doing it more on YouTube than Instagram. Instagram really does, um, you know, minus a five pick here and there. And I always love to take really pretty landscapes, um, picture, landscape pictures. So aside from that, it's really more of a professional platform and YouTube's something I want to create where I can have a bit more of an informal, um, personal hangout. So trying to get with the times guys, I am not computer savvy, but I've become a lot more computer savvy in the last like three months. All right. So I know how to do this now. I'm going to stop you guys so I can actually answer questions. Hold my, there we go. Okay. So here's the plan for today, guys. I'm going to answer some team wolf questions because I know you guys are really interested in those. Um, and any questions I haven't answered yet, I'm more than happy to answer. And then I have a surprise halfway through. I want to bring someone in and ask them questions that pertain to the van. So, all right. Oh, when do they think we'll be finished with the van? Um, we'll be we finished with the van, hopefully in a few weeks. Um, we've been showing a lot of detail in every episode, and I think it's just a little too tedious for people, it seems like, because the viewership is just really not there on those videos. Um, so I don't know if you guys prefer to see a bit more shoved together where we're not showing every detail and then if that's the case we might only have like two or three more episodes when it comes to the van build um so in real time we probably have like a month ish left or maybe even six weeks but we might just show them in maybe three or four episodes versus like six episodes um so let me know what you guys think about that in the comments um but yeah that's what we might do um, you guys like the details well, but yeah, it's tough. Like some of you guys like the details and then people just want to see like kind of what you're doing and then see the end result. So, so we have to kind of come up with a, a solution to make everyone happy. Season seven. I feel like a broken record guys. I'm an actor on the show. Um, a friend of mine sent me a breakdown of an actor's salary that Adelaide Kane did. And it's very accurate. We are just a man on the totem pole. We have no power to make a show come back you guys do but i'm not the right person to be tweeting at and instagramming if you want to make a show come back tweet mtv tweet mgm those are the people that can bring back a season seven of a show or the next season of a show that's been canceled um that is the power i have no power period i'm sorry to break it to you guys um so no there's no season seven no season seven of teen wolf as of September 2020. Um, and if you would like one, tweet an Instagram TV, tweet an Instagram MGM, write to them. Find the CEO of those of those companies, the president of Viacom. Viacom, that's another one. Write an email and tweet an Instagram at them. That is how you get another season of a show. Do not tweet at the actors because there's we have no power, guys. I hate to break it to you, but we have no power. Um, I loved the story of Veronica Mars where the fans brought back the show, but they didn't bring it back through Kristen Bell. They brought it back through tweeting at the showrunner and the, and the studios involved. So, um, yes, I'm still friends with the cast. I am, um, Colton's one of my best friends. Shelly and I like have a lot in common with dancing and being silly. Um, Crystal, I feel like she's like, you know, Monica, Rachel, Phoebe status with, you know, just growing up on a show with her. So of course I love her. Um, what is my favorite episode to film? Personally, I like season two, but I also like season 
three A and B because you got both sides of the cast. You got the new cast and you got the older cast. So, um, yeah, I would say, I would say that's what I liked. Um, can I speak French? A peu, tout le monde, un peu. <laughs> Désolé. Um, yeah, it's only a little bit. I'm still trying. I, I, I don't think I'll ever give up. I would love to take the van to France. That's, that's like one of my big goals. Live there for like six months and put stuff on tape and fly back and forth, which sounds easy in theory, but it is not. So, um, when I say put stuff on tape, I mean auditions. So there's that. By the way, all 543 of you, please do me a favor and subscribe. Please, 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 please. It really helps the channel. Um, I would really appreciate it. Okay. So next question is speak Spanish. I do use like a lot of like, cause I'm from Texas. I, um, will say like a key and like personas and you know, like we just colloquially, colloquially, is that even a word? Uh, say, speak Spanish, kind of Spanglish, but more English than the Spanglish, the, the Spanish. Um, do I ship Stidia? Of course. I, I, I think that the chemistry that, that, that Lydia and Dylan, Dylan, uh, Lydia and Styles have is, is really fun. So yes, I, I'm a fan. Um, oh, you were, since you're a five. Thank you. I appreciate you growing up with us. That's really cool. Um, what country would I like to go to one day? Oh, Japan. Japan's like on my list. I have never, I've never been to Japan. I would love to go to Indonesia. Um, ugh, there's so many places, but I don't know. I would say Japan. That's like a big dream of mine. Do you plan to travel with some of your friends from Team Wolf? Well, you'll have to stay tuned because I don't know. I don't run their lives. So maybe hopefully they'll come along sometimes. Um, I'll certainly be asking them. Do you have plans to travel with some of your fans from Team Wolf? What are the top three countries you want to visit your van? Oh, in the van. Um, Japan might be hard to get my van to. Oh, wouldn't that be epic if I could get the van to Japan? The van to Japan. That's a hashtag. Get that van to Japan. Hashtag van to Japan. Um, no, I would say if I could Japan. I mean, that would be nuts to have the van in Japan. Because uh, there's so many places in Japan I'd like to go. But there's so many islands, which would mean so many ferries for the van. But hell, why not? Japan in the van, um, France in the van, and then probably, um, I have all of my, most of my mom's side is from Norway, and so I would love to be able to take the van to Norway, um, yeah, but like Patagonia, Mexico, the Americas would be cool too, and I would love to do like, uh, parts of Canada, but it seems really beautiful, I follow some van lifers that are Canadian, and it's lovely, um, I would, yeah, Ireland and Scotland, that would be cool to travel in the van as well. Um, hi from Russia. Where's Fife? She's upstairs. Okay. So guys, she hates the nail gun right now. We're working. I'm in the camper van, um, that I showed in a few episodes prior to, to the, um, in the beginning of the series. And she's in the bonus room right now. Cause she hates the nail gun. So we, we put her upstairs and gave her a bone because she gets very mad when we put up the nail gun. Um, oh, you're skipping our online class. Okay, I hope you can make up this work, so I appreciate it. Um, you're so sweet. Let me see. I don't have Dylan's number, guys. I can't call Dylan. <laughs> um, do you plan on doing meetups with fans to travel to other countries? If you're talking about conventions, yes. We have one set up in Paris next year. Um, hi from Texas. Hi. I quarantined for a while in Texas. That's where my family's from. Um, yes, write to MTV Instagram. I thank you. I don't you woo. <laughs> UWU. That is the right person to write all season seven info to. Channel all your season seven energy and throw it at MTV and MGM. MGM actually owns Team Wolf. M MTV does not. So between I would do both because you're not gonna get it just with MTV and Viacom. Viacom owns MTV. You're gonna have to do it with MGM too, but um, that's the best chance you have if there's any chance, but as of now, there's no chance. Um, do I like Israel? Of course I like Israel. Um, my stylist is from Israel and they make amazing, um, Fauda is a show I watched that's Israeli. It's really fun. Um, I know there's a lot of political views of, of Israel, but. I choose not to take those views because I like, I have friends all over um, the Middle East and I have very dear friends in Lebanon and Jordan and Israel. So 
um, I choose to love everyone. Um, is the van building, is the building of the van everything you thought it would be? Yes, the building of the van is everything I thought and more. That has to do a lot with the second portion of this, of this video. Um, a very special person I uh, feel is really cool to talk to you about this van build will be joining us. And it's not Steve, guys. Um, even though Steve's pretty damn intricate to the build, obviously. Um, are you thinking of coming to South America? I am in the van, yes. Brazil is really big. So I'm not sure if I plan on coming to the van in Brazil. Um, but I mean, we'll see. Um, I've been to Brazil a few times, but I haven't really driven across Brazil, but it's so big. So that's probably why. What's your favorite color? It is green. You got that right. But what kind of green is is the test for the van? Um, are you going to do an everyday vlog? Hell no, I'm not doing an everyday vlog, guys. Are you thinking I'm crazy? Uh-uh. I know how hard those are. Those are no, 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 no. It's hard because of the editing. No, guys. I am not a YouTuber. I'm trying to become a YouTuber. I'm an actor. It's different. Um, I'm just getting used to the camera work and, like, basic editing. Um... But I am going to work on the editing for sure. I'm learning Premiere. What are you going to post? Ooh, our special guest is here. Oh, gosh. Yes, there'll be a van tour. Okay, everyone. We have to kind of squeeze because it's in portrait mode. All but right. come on in. <laughs> Guys, welcome. Carrie Doe. Are you Carrie Doe? Yeah. Yeah, you're Carrie Doe. That's what yeah. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Hi. This is who I wanted you guys to talk to. <laughs> she is such a superwoman. And there's so many reasons why I, A, want to talk to you because she builds professionally. She and her husband of nine years, right? Yep, yep. Um, can I tell the Steve story, like, unless you had met Steve and this is what brought you to Vance? Sure, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to truncate this because I want to get, like, <laughs> the history of Carrie building. This is Mike's wife. This is Steve's best friend's wife. Mm -hmm. And Steve and Mike met years ago. And if it wasn't for Steve getting involved in his van in 2016, Carrie and Mike probably would have not gotten into vans. And we were going to do this in their van. It took two weeks to build, not four months or six yeah. months or eight months. <laughs> but they're engineers. They're builders. So it's a pretty incredible build for two weeks. Um, which at some point you'll definitely see posts probably on the community post. Um, yeah, it's a bit messy and gross right it's now. It's rainy it's, right now. It's disgusting. Vans get very messy when it's rainy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, so, so they said if they hadn't gotten involved in vans, they probably would be flipping houses right now. And Mike quoted quote from last night was like, I'm built, I'm bored of houses. I want vans. Mm -hmm. So Carrie used to be a very risk adverse person. Still is. Yeah. yeah. Still is. Mm -hmm. She loves van life. She's like sending her husband cool van builds. <laughs> um, they want to, you know, hopefully big plans in the future surrounding vans. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I'm a skier. That's the only thing I can like really make an analogy to, I guess I should sure. say like, um, in the sense that like I grew up skiing, it is kind of like a foreign language. It's really hard to learn as an adult. Mm -hmm. Well, Carrie grew up building and she used to like take apart engines, put them back together. <laughs> so what do you think it was that made you first start building? Cause to all, like there's a lot of young girls watching. Yeah, I guess, um, just in general, I like to be creative and I like to work with my hands and, it was more of a matter of like whatever I could get my hands on, I wanted to use and build with. So if it wasn't, you know, like a sewing project or some like painting of something, um, it was building stuff. Um, so my parents had a woodworking shop in their house and my dad taught me how to use some of the tools. How old were you? Oh gosh. I don't know. I was pretty young. I don't know. Maybe eight, ten, something okay. like that. Okay. So, so you weren't like... At five and six. No, probably not. Drills. I don't think I don't think my dad would let me do okay. that. Okay. Okay. So you were like eight, Maybe. Ten. Like okay. he might have, you know, given me a sander and had my okay. sands and stuff. But um but no, it's uh uh I kinda got free reign and he my dad had like a big scrap wood pile because he was always making stuff too. Um so he let me use the scrap wood and create whatever I want. And you, to like, as a kid, that's so special when yeah. you just, like, go oh, pick a piece of wood out. And, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then I think what, what I, I was thinking about this today, like, I like to just uh, pick up any scrap wood pieces and figure out what I could make out of it. 
Because that's just what I always did. Amazing. Yeah. You need like a scrap wood museum of like all <laughs> things that can be made out of scrap wood. Yeah. <laughs> and and so when did you know like at what age did you feel like you really had a handle on I could build furniture, I can build houses, I can build frames for houses? Like were you a teenager? Like, did it keep regressing past I ten? Think, I mean, or did yeah. you take breaks and come back to building? It was. I always jumped around. So okay. if it, I tend to be interested in something for a little while and then move on to something else for a little while and then jump to something else, and you know, being in Wisconsin, you need it. Would, it's nice to have a warm space to work in. So is usually it, wood stuff is summer. summer. Yeah, summertime. Oh, interesting. Okay, so summertime. Is, so. is it common to air condition and heat wood shops? Uh, it probably depends. I mean, a lot of people have them in their basements. Um, mm-hmm. that's the most common or a garage and not everyone has an insulated garage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's, keep yeah. talking. I'm just making sure, there's, <laughs> sure. If there's any questions for you. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, uh, um, I don't know. It's, it kind of depends. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it's just, it's fascinating to me because I think a lot of building, no matter how experienced you are and the more experienced you are though the more ideas you can have like mm-hmm. we're making um a project right now that she was going to make with a hole saw and i was like how do you come up with these ideas like is that something that just popped into your brain recently or like have you in the past you've known like hole saws can make curved trims um like, how i do you never well this, the, this particular project we're, i'm working on i've never done before okay. so it might okay. not turn out so we'll okay. see <laughs> but it's interesting but... for you to like have to problem solve yeah and yeah. Do you feel like a lot of builders are just natural, unofficial engineers, or do you feel like engineering yeah. has helped your building? I think um, it's a, a bit of both. Okay. So in engineering, we do problem solving all the time. That's our job is to solve problems, make things fit together, come up with creative solutions. Um, and I've kind of always been that way, I guess, just the creativity part of it. Um, so if it, a lot of it comes from experience and especially with working from, with different tools, like you don't know what you can do until you know, oh, there's a tool for that. Right. Or like, right. yeah. So. And, and when did you start like collecting your tool kit? Was it after you were married? Like right after college? Or were you collecting as, as a teenager, you had like your tools that your dad started giving you and like yeah. building up your own set? Well, my dad gave me a drill when I was in college. So I had a drill, okay. which was cool. So that was, you didn't have a drill in high school. It was still your parents' no, stuff. No, it was all my parents' stuff. Okay. Yeah, I never had That's my own. Yeah. So it wasn't until after college where I actually had time to do something. Were you ever building like in your free time in college? No, no. I never really had access okay. to okay. a shop or anything Did like Did like any of your friends know you built? Like you built like... Um, in this kind of capacity? Yeah. So one of, one of my friends growing up, um, had this little, um, I don't know what I call it, like a, not a tree house, but like a little fort in her backyard and we rebuilt it. We, we, oh, wow. she built too. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. So she and I went around town and collected pallets and we made like a little fort in her backyard out of pallets, and it was two stories. Is she also an engineer? Mm-mm. Really? Yeah. What did she do now? Um, I'm actually not quite sure. I'm not Aww. close friends with her anymore. <laughs> I just don't know of any. I hardly know any builders in my life, yeah. um, as far as actors go. I know an actor, Nick Offerman. I think is who. Mm-hmm. Yeah, makes canoes in a canoe shop. Like he has his own um, space downtown in L.A. But. Outside of that, obviously, Kara Ford was a carpenter. I can't tell you any female actresses that build. And I find that fascinating. I'm sure it might also, you might have this experience in your life. Like, did your sister build? No, I don't. There's so it was not just something you took to. Yeah, I just like it. I mean, it's just creating. Creating. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have a lot of different hobbies, and I like to do, I'm kind of an artsy person, too, so. Yeah. I would, I don't know, make curtains and pillowcases and then, you know, paint and draw and then build makes stuff. It, makes things so much cheaper, guys, when you're yeah. able to do it yourself. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. having to hire a handy person is my goal. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just think it's fascinating that Carrie can come in. Like, I wish I could have called Steve up and been like, hey, Steve, I, here's here's my deal. Here's my name. You know, this is who I am. Um, here's my name. I know how to build. I just need your, like, expertise here and there, building a van because I haven't done it. That's what I wish I could have called Steve and said to him instead of going, I have no building experience. You want to help me? <laughs> like, that's been really frustrating. And I've learned a lot 
But at the same time, I was even saying last night, like, I wish I didn't learn as much as I wish I, my brain would have put mm -hmm. together because there's a certain building brain that like needs to understand spatially, spatially, spatially integrated with math problems, mm -hmm. kind of like, yeah, building, English, like building but... a cabinet door, figuring out how far in from the edges and the top and the bottom and like just seeing the whole vision um and seeing the details of that vision and being able to put um, a numerical value on that mm -hmm. um and being able to go oh, probably a quarter inch is enough or is an eighth inch enough and mm -hmm. counting in eighths and um yeah it's just different it's we, just like a different skill set we were subtracting fractions yesterday <laughs> we were. common denominator guys i remember that part um and then, like, you know, efficiently using plywood. I mean, there's just so many aspects that come into buildings. So it's yeah. really cool to meet someone that gets to build with her husband. And I find mm -hmm. that fascinating that that's um, a really unique hobby to do. Mm -hmm. um, building something with someone. I've gotten to do that one time on this build um, with my boyfriend. And it just, it it's a really cool feeling. And so I got to tell Carrie, like, this is so cool. You get to, like, build whole houses and have that connection. So I find that interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to think of the other burning desire questions I have for you. Um, how long did it take you and Mike to build a house? Oh my gosh. You did, or like how much did you run yeah. out? And yeah. Then how long did that mm -hmm. take y'all? So we bought our house two days after we got married, two or three days after we got married. And this was their honeymoon. This is our honeymoon, buying a house. And immediately we ripped carpet out and then we're like, well, what are we supposed to do now? We don't have carpet in. So we watched a lot of YouTube videos. Really? Yes. Lots of YouTube videos to uh, learn how to install flooring, install um, crown molding. Install would you get up trim. early and watch videos like Mike sleeping and Mike would be like up late at night while you're sleeping watching other videos? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a morning person and Mike is a night person. So we're, I'm... Yeah. Well, so my boyfriend and I, like, he's a morning and, 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 then, and then I'm a night. Yeah. So we, we, we struggle with the same. So yes. to see nine years of marriage is actually really promising. <laughs> really promising that it's, it can work. Yes. It's taken a while to get to that point where we're comfortable, you know, not going to bed at the same time. Yeah. Someone can stay up late yeah. while the other one goes to sleep. I usually will try to get in bed and then just be like, screw it. Get up later. Like, I get up in 30 minutes. So, like, he thinks I go to bed, but then I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I get, I'm an inherent night person. It's just, that's how I am. Yeah. Um. Let me see. Um, Where did it go? Where did all of them come? Yeah, I don't talk about my boyfriend a lot on here. No. <laughs> no, I don't think I had one. Um, okay, so let me see. I don't have Dylan O'Brien's number. I'm not calling Dylan because I don't have his number. So <laughs> I, it's, just hard, it's, it's just hard for me to call him as it is for you. Um, okay. <laughs> let me see. Um, let me see if there's, I want to find, um, we were about COVID and, if, okay, so the thing, the great thing with COVID and vans, or there's not, there's no great, there's no great about, thing part about COVID, COVID first of all, <laughs> I, that was pro improperly worded, um, <laughs> when you have a van, you can, it's sort of inherently socially distanced as it is, because mm -hmm. you're not staying in hotels, mm -hmm. it's just like driving in a normal car where, you know, you have to use hand sanitizer at the, um, gas station, same thing, but that's about the biggest interaction you can technically have is just getting water at the gas station mm -hmm. or a fill station or a fire plate, fire engine place, mm -hmm. um, fire station, <laughs> um, fire yeah. engine place, those places. <laughs> um, so it's really a great, because these are off grid vehicles, these are not campsite vehicles. Mm -hmm. They can be, but they don't have to be. And so, it, yeah, for traveling, it actually really works. I mean, I'm going to a lot of outdoor spots, not mm -hmm. so much cities, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot of campsites in the states, at least right now, that are pretty full. Yeah. And so this makes it a lot easier. To, it's called dispersed camping to wild camping to pull up anywhere, and you've got everything you need. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm not too worried about COVID. It just kind of sucks when you're in the cities. That's going to affect what's open. Um, but we won't be in cities very often. Um. So yeah. What was your favorite part of building in the van so far? Ooh. Watching Carrie and Mike work together is actually a really entertaining it's, it's, endeavor. It's, it's comical. Yes. <laughs> yes. Like, I'm scared to make Mike mad, but I think I, I did that this morning, so I that, that's already done. Um, when I told him, we had a countertop story. Yeah. There's a bit of a time lag between the videos and what we're working on. 
Um, but I would say watching them is really just really cool. I love to see couples have something really intensely in common. I think that's such a great thing for couples in general. And um, yeah, I just like watching them build. My favorite building for myself is probably... I built my cabinet doors, which is pretty cool. She's really good at it. Ish, ish. I mean, it's at least I know how to do it. So that's nice. And I'm getting better at looking at plywood and seeing, like, how do I efficiently cut it? Yeah. That's a hard <laughs> it's a part. It's tricky. Yeah. Because you have to think ahead. You have to think, well, what am I cutting in the, in the next two days or the next this project? So, that, yeah, that you don't cut right through. You know, if you're cutting a shorter door right now and you cut all the way across your plywood sheet, but then over here, because on a table saw, you got to cut all the way through for the most part, but you're making a long door, well, you just cut halfway through your door. Yeah. So you have to make sure you do that properly. Mm -hmm. um, so so how long did your reno take in the house? Oh, yeah, we were talking about the house. Um, uh, Years, probably three or four years. And it, Did we were, it look livable, though, like in between that time? Yeah, I mean, we kind of went like room by room um, or area by area in the house, and uh, we... It took us like nine months just to do our kitchen, so we were we were without a kitchen for nine months. Does that not drive you nuts? Oh, cr I went crazy. You like, didn't go crazy. Okay. Yeah. Like that's why I don't have the patience to be an engineer or a builder. Where I'm like, <laughs> have it done in three weeks. Yeah. Like that's I I have a problem. Oh, Mike wants to come. Mike wants to come, come say hi. Come in. Hi, Mike. Come in here. <laughs> no. Oh, no. He says no. Um, oh, he's coming. But he's in coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, come, Michael. Come say hi. Hi. We're talking about your years of reno, but your nine-month kitchen reno. Ugh, it's yeah. the worst. Well, I mean, we were working full time. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> hi, everyone. That's all I'm doing is just saying hi. Yeah. <laughs> is there any future building projects? Not for me. Maybe little ones, but not for me. These two hopefully have some big van plans. We'll see. Yeah. Big building plans. We'll general. build more. Yeah, we yeah. we definitely want to rebuild our own van. Like Holland was saying, we built our van out in two weeks. It's not insulated. It's not heated. It still has the gray panels in it. Ooh, coffee. No, it's not coffee. Oh, it's tea. Hot water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah. We're hoping to do some more builds, maybe client builds, and um, so we'll see what that takes us. Okay, I'm going back to work. Goodbye, everyone. Right, Goodbye. Bye. We'll be there soon because <laughs> we just wanted to say hi and. I was just letting them know that, like, this is a place, it's a much more casual place to hang out. Are you and your husband always on the same projects? Oh, no. Not at all. Um, we, after years of doing stuff together, uh, you know how a lot of couples argue about, you know, putting dishes away or, like, what chores that you need to do? Mm -hmm. We argue about the the process that you take to get from the start of a project to the end of a project and every little piece. So sometimes we just have to work separately oh, for the Because you want this part <laughs> done and he wants that part done. You're like, well, I'm getting this part done. Yes. And she can go do it. She doesn't have to beg him to do it, yes. which is so freeing. I wish I would have like, had more building influence in my life growing up. And my dad's a surgeon, so you would think that, like, maybe he doesn't build because he's scared to compromise his hands yeah there could be that yeah definitely commonality i mean you've gotten really close to a saw blade so like it's oh it's scary. like it's very how, what's the what's the closest you would come to the table saw like inch wise like when do you use a push push stick is when you push the wood through between the fence which is what holds the wood mm -hmm. against it and the blade so a push stick helps you so you don't have to put your hand next to the blade but how how uh, i don't know probably a few inches so you're not as crazy as mike no. Mike's insane. And so Steve, by the way. They both don't get a pass. Yeah. Someone's going to end up without a finger. Girls are just... <laughs> I don't know if it's just this girl, but I feel like we're te technically more cautious, I would say. But, well, more just logical. Mm -hmm. Like, why not use a push stick? There's mm -hmm. nothing... There's Like, I just did a table saw cut, and I was really wanting to do it by myself. I probably could have, but I'm like, you get one chance on the table saw. Yeah. That's it. I'm going to go get someone else to help me on this. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> Hi, Mariah. Um, where do you want to take the van first? Um, well, we're going, I'm going back to L.A., so I'm going to be taking, um, going across the U.S. That's where I'm technically taking it first. Um, okay, so has it been hard learning building as an adult? It's so hard, guys. It's so hard, but 
I do also believe, even though it's so hard, I can't go back and be a kid. So why not start? It's mm -hmm. never too late. It will be harder as an adult, but I can't go back in time. So we haven't built that project yet. <laughs> haven't built a time machine. So yeah, I, I, I have no problem with that. And um, learning French is really hard as an adult and building is hard as an adult. And I'm sure if you learn to ski as an adult, I've seen adults try and they really want to ski well. Mm -hmm. And I know what that feels like and that frustration from a building perspective and from a learning a foreign language perspective. So I feel their pain because um, I'm I am a two year old in that department. So I, I know what that feels like. It sucks. Um, but I'm never going to get better if I don't try. Mm -hmm. um, what I have a question. What do you, what is your end goal with building? Like what is you you've ever had like a big dream project? And if you succeeded and if you have, then what's your next big project? It's like really hard to build or yeah. just something you daydream about. I guess I'm not exactly sure. Um, I kind of feel like when we have an idea of what we want to do, we just do it. I and like, what's the hardest thing you built? Oh, hardest thing I built. I don't know if anything is really that hard. It's just time consuming, right? So like you, a van is hard. I mean, it's hard, but like you learn how to do it, and then and it just takes time. Mm -hmm. So like. If you simplify every little piece of it, it really isn't that hard. It just takes time. But the so. building on a curve is like a bitch. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a bitch, guys. Yes. People make van builds look easy. They are not easy. Yeah. Everything's on a curve. And when you look at things in a van, they look straight. Mm -hmm. It's because someone built that well. Yes. And like if you're building a cabinet, this measurement is not the same as this measurement. Mm -hmm. And in a normal house, it is. Yeah. So. And the the van walls curve, and nothing's flat. And we we're we we're, I was laughing at Mike this morning because he was using a level, to just as like a straight edge. Mm -hmm. But he was using a level. I'm like Mike, you know that the van isn't level. He's That's like, right. Well, yeah. <laughs> also, on a van, you're never going to be on usually level terrain. Like the front mm -hmm. will be slightly higher than the back, or you probably don't even notice these things. That even if you're parking on the side of the street, the rights lower than the left mm -hmm. um are you going to name your van hollandaise guys <laughs> we're on the hollandaise channel <laughs> hollandaise is the name of the van i actually don't like the name personally <laughs> i really don't i don't well, like you the can name. you can rename you can name your van and you can name your adventure that's true i can yeah. name yes i i i might um like on off the record call it something different because i think holland i just said hollandaise because it like matches my name and it sounds like a holiday yeah. but they're holidays and mm -hmm. so um i think it's like it works well but i i would probably name it something else um something just i don't know i, I have a couple ideas and throwing it in the hat but just nothing frank 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 fan. <laughs> i liked viking viking was one of my names Ooh. i liked and i would call him i would call her vike <laughs> could could be weird um but anyway um will you ever come to sweden i've been to sweden i've been to order sweden and i've been to stockholm um, it's lovely, and I definitely plan to go back. Um, let me see. What made you want to have your own van? Freedom. And it's a tiny house on wheels. You can do anything with them. You can take mm -hmm. them anywhere in the world and have everything with you. Mm -hmm. um, what is the hardest part about building a van? The curves? <laughs> I would say the curves and the just the space. Like, mm -hmm. you're cramming everything into these tiny little spaces. Tiny. And It's Tetris. Mm -hmm. And you're paying more. Um, to buy the same thing but it's smaller that's also true so you, yeah. if you're a person that thinks bigger is better van life is not for you mm -hmm. if you think like oh i want more square footage for more money van life is not for you yeah. you pay more like carrie said to get less um yeah. but in my opinion and carrie's opinion most people get into van life and they're not quitting a year in there's some but but not many i mean mm -hmm. most people plan it for a year and they're staying five years so i think how much you pay for as far as space goes is not equivalent to like what you get. Like, mm -hmm. yes, you're paying for a smaller space, but that space can go anywhere and fit in a normal parking spot. Not their van. Their van's a 170 extended. It's kind of big. It's big. Their van's, <laughs> their van's a mini bus. Um, that is, yeah. Um, let's, let's, let's finish up with some, um, what's your favorite, it's gaps and cracks is my favorite installation. <laughs> it's the best. So I hope they sponsor yes. us. They won't, but yeah. Um, the most exciting part about building a van is just having your home on wheels. Oops. And, um, how long till the van's done? 
I was debating that, that I'm on this. Some people want details, but other people tend to just want the final result. So I was like, mm-hmm. we technically probably have like six weeks left in our build, but um, we might get the episodes done in like maybe three or three episodes um, and just try and highlight the important parts. Mm-hmm. Um, let me see. I think that's it. Um I sure hope to see Carrie and Mike in the future, um, yeah. with with especially with Van stuff as well, because I know that makes them very happy. And mm-hmm. I think it's hard to find responsible, smart people that build with care, and they both do, to the point where I am like, guys, leave it. Let's move on. Oh my god. Um, and it can be so frustrating. <laughs> I'm like, it's a van DIY. Yeah. Let's go. And Mike's like, this is not DIY. And it's not. It's not DIY. It is and it isn't. I mean, yes, we're doing a backyard build, but this is a very fancy backyard build. Oh, yeah. It is not normal. Um, How does parking oh, your van work? Like a normal... Well, for them, it's a bit different. For yeah. me, for a 144, it's 144 Mercedes Sprinter. It's it's a normal parking spot. The only thing is it's extra high, so I can't go into parking garages or drive throughs mm-hmm. But for me, it's normal. Yeah. Ours is big, so we have to use two parking spots um we don't usually go to cities so and wisconsin has a lot of space yeah yeah not so. a great one city extended in la would not work <laughs> you could but it would be really hard I yeah think. like y'all yeah. wouldn't have bought a 170 extended if you lived in los angeles no yeah. probably not yeah i think because we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere or we prefer to be out in the middle of nowhere um having the bigger van is nice um it is can be scary going through some rough terrain because it's a big vehicle. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, we have we've gotten stuck in the sand once. Did you have max trucks? No, we didn't have anything. We found so we were in uh, Moab, and oh. yeah, and we were in some like dispersed camping area and uh trying to find us a good spot to park so we were going along this road and got stuck in the sand and luckily there were people around so we walked to find somebody who had a truck and they pulled us out that's how you got out Mm -hmm. jeez yeah i was gonna say it's nice that y'all are together but at the same time it was another person that had to solve that like another vehicle yeah but if I get stuck, hopefully there's another vehicle. Oh, yeah. People are so helpful. It's so nice. Van life. I feel like the people in van life, um, we had a friend that you're going to see in some of our B-roll who um, was not, like, formally um, introduced on the on the series. But I think you'll see it in the background a little bit. Her name's Ed. She's fabulous. I think she's starting an Etsy shop soon, so I'll let you know when that, that's up and running. But she lives in a van. She's, like, OG legit van girl. Like, she's not, like... Me over here who's kind of glamping and, and um, you know, I, I will be the first to admit I'm a little high maintenance when it comes to a van. Because um, I want it to be like a full house. No, it's a house. You should be high maintenance. That's why I'm it's doing it. But there's a lot of van people that, like, want either a lower budget, quick. Mm-hmm. And what she's created is really beautiful. And um, it's a legit van, though. Like, it's like a lot. The, the, how she keeps her water is super small. There's no water, um, there's no shower or toilet in the van. Um, and she's been doing it for like two years and, and I really commend her for that. She's a really cool woman. So, um, I had a point to saying this though. There's all different kinds of vans, I think was my point. Yeah. Um, yep. I think we'll just, uh, start wrapping it up. There was a, f- a question above that said, how is Fievel comfortable? Honestly, for <laughs> Carrie can attest to this. As long as Fievel and I are, like, together, we're so comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was filming a movie in Cape Town for four months, it killed me to be away from Fievel. It just, it did not suit me well. I, I cannot be without my child. Um, she is, she is my child. <laughs> um, so as long as she's with me and I'm with her, we feel pretty comfortable. Um, we can be really anywhere in the world. So mm-hmm. half this van build is for her because it, I can take her everywhere. Somebody asked about your color scheme. So it's green. You guys know that, but we don't know the kind of green it is. Yeah. And it's um, my favorite green. It's all over my stationary house as well. But I might be sol- uh, solving, selling for <laughs> the for this, you know, for, for Holland Days of the van. Um, I do plan on trying to live in it full time starting in the next few months. Um, and, oh, Carrie, what build um, are you the most proud of? Ooh. That might be a future tense question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can think of things in my own house that I've done. Um, 
Oh, gosh. What's the coolest thing you want to do in a van that you would be the most proud of? Oh, I've got some ideas for a shower. Oh. It's a shower bed combo. <gasps> a shower bed combo. System. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We want to um, have our bed slide out the back of our van so oh, yes. we can do some stargazing at night if we want to. I've only but, seen like two beds like that. Yeah. Those we have some heavy duty sliders. Yes. We also want it to curve up. The bed? So, yes. We want it to curve up in the back. So if we have our doors closed, have the bed curve up. And then for where we push it, we have a space that's a couple feet wide mm-hmm. that would be big enough that we could turn that area into a shower. So when the bed's out. Yeah. When okay. the bed is either pushed out or and That's a big out. shower. It could, could be. be. Yeah, it could be. could be yeah. pretty big. That's interesting. Yeah. Because we always find, like, if we have to shower, it's usually, like, at the end of the day, and it's while we're making dinner, Mm -hmm. and, like, we might have just gone biking or hiking, and we're just really dirty. Um, So right now we have a shower system where we just hook up in the back side of our van outdoors, Mm -hmm. Um, but I really want an indoor shower. So um, that's our future activity that I'm really excited about, and I hope that it works out so we can have a nice, warm indoor shower. And uh, we don't have to worry about showering when it's cold like it is here right now. So true. Because that would suck. Hi, Chris. My friend Chris is on the, oh. on the chat. Thank you um, for checking us out. Okay, so I think I think we might wrap it up because we've got tons of dream projects in the future for Carrie and Mike. Mm. And I hope to check out on them as much as possible is my, is my dream for Carrie and Mike um, with how would I be involved in that situation? <laughs> My dream for myself in conjunction with them is to be able to see the projects they're working on. I believe other people would like them too. Um, and yeah, just, just meeting a couple that builds together. I know a lot of like interior designer builders, couples, but I, I don't, I'm sure they're out there, guys. Mm-hmm. Don't quote me. <laughs> like, they, of course, they build our couples, but I just don't know any. And I've never seen any on television. Um, I know a couple of women that I follow that build, that have incredible builds, um, and maybe their husbands do build with them, but, uh, or their boyfriends, but I've mm-hmm. never seen it. Mm-hmm. And I've only seen either the woman build or a man build, but I've never seen couples building together. So I want to see more of that. And Carrie and Mike are also lovely people who are also entertaining people and not just intelligent people. <laughs> so, so. They're just my favorite people to build together, to Aww, watch build together. You're so kind. Um, well, it's true. <laughs> um, okay, so, guys, there's no workouts right now. Workouts, oh. it, building the van's actually not a big workout. That's kind of a myth, I think. What do you think? You're moving around a lot, but you're not, like, cardio. No, yeah. Cardio it up. It's like when you're building, you just get so involved. Mm-hmm. And you're working late. You're on your feet all day. You just don't want to be doing anything else. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's exciting. Like, you really like it. It's really enjoyable. But you just, like, you forget to check your email. Yeah. You forget to, like, call people. You forget to keep up with, like, the world around you. It's only... I will say that's, that's so true. Like, you can't be bothered. It's, like, yeah. annoying when you're, like... Even running a YouTube channel while building is... I have... I give such major props to people who do that. And especially that do that by themselves. If you're a couple... It's still incredibly difficult, but at least you can mm-hmm. kind of manage it and balance it together. When you're by yourself doing both, it's really difficult. Um, so, yeah, I would I would say building, you definitely get lost in the build. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of nice that way. Um, so that's so cool that, like, if this does end up being Mike and Carrie's full-time gig, I would be so ecstatic to watch that because it's cool that they can lose themselves to their jobs. Yeah. That would be really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. And they're doing it together, which is so cool. Um, all right, guys. It's been 45 minutes. We have to get back to building, literally. And um, you could build a solar collector on the roof that says something for the hot water. Oh, for hot water energy. There's been a couple electric questions. Yeah. Um, stay tuned because Mike and Carrie, as they are engineers, have some ideas about that. <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks, guys, for joining. I really appreciate it. All 430 of you guys have been amazing Ooh, to stick it through this long. That's um, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thank you guys for making the time for us, and we will be seeing you soon. Um, I did mention Teen Wolf, guys. You weren't here early enough for the people (laughs) who are like Teen Wolf questions. Um, So, yeah. Thanks for watching Teen Wolf. Thanks for watching Holland Days. And we're so happy to have Carrie and Mike on board, and you'll see more of them soon. 
Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> that's how they. That's how the kids do it. <laughs> I don't know how to do this. There we go.